There are many places in this world where one can experience wildlife. For me, it was Africa. In Southeast Africa lies a small plot of land that is home to some of Africa's amazing animals and plants, but it hasn't always been that way. Milwani Wildlife Sanctuary is one of the most important conservation areas in Swaziland, and to live up to its name, Milwani, meaning little fire, was the first spark of conservation in Swaziland. Milwani is located on the western side of Swaziland, which is surrounded by the countries of South Africa and Mozambique. It was once filled with many species of animals and plants, but because of overhunting and bad development practices, most of the animals and plant species have become extinct, not only in Swaziland, but in much of Africa. In 1960, Swazi-born Ted Riley converted his family farm into the first conservation area in Swaziland, and with the help of the Swaziland monarchy, was able to bring back many plant and animal species. He did this because he thought it was important to provide a place where the wildlife of Swaziland could be protected and reintroduced. Many people now come from all over the world to see Milwani. I wanted to see for myself why this wildlife sanctuary is so important. In October of 2011, I set out to study Milwani. I visited Milwani during all times of the day and in various weather conditions. Most of the animal observation occurred from within my car because the animals don't see the car as a threat, but become much more skittish when they see humans. To study the plants at Milwani, there are many trails, including a hike to the top of historic Execution Rock, which overlooks much of the sanctuary. From the top of Execution Rock, I could look down and see the different types of habitats found within Milwani. I could see the open areas known as montane grassland. There are also marshlands and woodlands that cover the landscape of Milwani. Many of the plants found at Milwani are technically invasive, but have been in Swaziland for so long that they seem as if they have always been a part of the habitat. An example of these are the large eucalyptus trees, which have formed small forests all throughout Milwani. Acacia or umbrella thorn trees dot the grasslands and provide much needed shade during the heat of the day. Sausage trees grow large brown fruit that looks like a sausage, but are not edible. Unique jacaranda trees grow purple flowers during the spring months of October and November, and are very common but are also invasive. Bushes and shrubs include lantana, mountain aloe, and honeysuckle. Regular prescribed burns help provide ideal feed and habitat for many of the animals, large and small. In the open plains stand numerous termite mounds. Many other insects thrive and make up much of the food for larger animals like birds. Bird species include the active village weaver that builds intricate nests in many of the trees near wetlands. The nests consist of grasses found in the plains near the wetlands. Sometimes what appear to be good nests are found on the ground because the female weaver rejected it, so the male snipped it off and started over. Other birds include the sacred ibis, Egyptian goose, spur-winged goose, and a variety of herons and egrets. Birds aren't the only animals found in the trees. Vervet monkeys also share the branches and are often found in and around the grasses. Further out in the grasslands, warthogs use their tusks to dig through the dirt looking for insects and roots. A variety of other large mammals are found within Milwaukee, including Impala, Blesbok, Nyala, Kudu, Virtual Zebras, and Blue Wildebeest. Milwani pays special attention to helping endangered species, and among them are the roan antelope. One of the best places to view wildlife is at the hippo pond. Many reptiles are found here, including serrated hinged terrapin, which are commonly mistaken for turtles. I often found them in the afternoon lying in the red mud and sand, which has become its distinctive color because of the high levels of iron oxide in the soil. Also found along the banks and seen swimming through the pond are Nile crocodiles that can grow up to 16 feet long. I had to be careful as I walked through the trees above the pond because these crocodiles crawl into the trees to find shade. Contrary to what many people think, the crocodiles aren't the most dangerous animals at the hippo pond. 
Hippopotamus are actually considered to be some of the most dangerous and are thought to have killed more people in Africa than any other animals. Distance was a must when I was observing the hippos and crocodiles. This is not a zoo. There is no fence between you and a one and a half ton hippo. Big or small, all the animals and plants at Milwani were fascinating to observe, whether it was the hippos or the warthogs, the village weavers or the herons, the jacaranda or the aloe. Milwani is a remarkable conservation area. Over 50 years ago, the spark of conservation was started in Swaziland. Now it has risen to its goal of becoming an area where people like me have the opportunity to view saved and protected precious African wildlife.